Ti senti anche? Tieni anche vicino perché sennò non senti. Ok. Yeah, you're gonna have a tough time hearing it unless you get real close. Ok. So it's um, about computer music. You've done a lot of stuff. I mean, mainly soundtracks. Yeah. But you started in, uh, with the police probably using some tools. At the end of the police, I got a Fairlight and Sting got a Synclavier. Okay. And we had them in the studio set up next to each other, the competing technologies. And um, so instead of Sting and I fighting, the computers fought. Like it is? And that was even worse. That was the time when Sting actually just walked out of the studio and didn't come back. <laughs> but anyway, uh, if your relationship with if you, this kind of things, I mean, you're a drummer. Yeah. Or at least you were just, fly. just a drummer at the time. But well, I had a philosophy as a drummer that when the drum boxes first arrived, yeah. and all the drummers were terrified that they would be replaced by drum boxes, well, the first thing I did was go out and get them. <clears throat> because I used uh, a drum box way back um, very early to make, you know, like to record solo songs. You know, I learned this from Clark Kent. To use the, um, they had these drum boxes which were made for lounge for people playing in a bar. It had like four rhythms that had rock one, rock two, rumba, samba, you know, and you know, ballad. And, um, but I could use that as a click track, which created um, some kind of groove, and I'd play guitar to that. And then once I had the guitar, then I could play the drums and then build it up from there. But I've been using technology in that way very early on. Tape recorders, I used to use a, a Rebox A77. And then I graduated when I could afford one, I got the TAC 4 track. And the first computer I got was, um, was Fairlight. Which, when it was uh, when it was an eight bit eight, eight mono tracks, and I did all of the equalizer on it. I remember I remember about a um, special about the written uh, where you were showing it to you and oh, I a big scan where he is as he sampled all the, yes, all yes. the stuff in Africa. That was PCM technology. That was, the, that was the first digital recording and they used video cassettes. You would record onto a beta video yeah. cassette. And um, it seems so it seems so small then, but now it, it seems so huge. Yeah. But exactly. That's what you had on the road. That's right. When you were in that uh, in, in Africa. Africa. But when you came back, you sampled old all, all, all the um, the voices, the yeah. sound, yeah. and you put it on a well you were the showing fairlight. No, the fairlight, that's the one. Yeah. You we were showing old notes in a screen, so that was something like one of the first things. Well, also I have to say it was Peter Gabriel who turned me on to computer music. Because he was talking about the Fairlight and this amazing stuff that we do. And I thought, I want to get one. And um, he introduced me to his friend. <laughs> what about it over there? I guess so. I guess so. They say that they want to have the power. They want to get the well, okay, well then, if they come around and, um... Go there? I'll tell you. I'll tell you, get a piece of paper, bring the piece of paper here and I'll, I'll, I'll sign it, and then you can take it back. So if, if, if they give you the thing... <laughs> so, Peter Gabriel introduced you to uh, base kind of work, yeah. to digital... Well, he was talking about Fairlight, uh, and there was another one called the Emulator which was the first machine which had samples and you press a button you get an orchestra sample boom uh, yeah. and then I was all interested in that but before I bought one of those I was ready to get one immediately um, the place where I went to get the emulator the guy said wait till you hear this and he showed me a Fairlight and in those days the Fairlight cost a small house um, very expensive and uh, it was like a major investment to get this huge machine and it seems like such a small machine now. Big in size, small in capability. And they say that you're the, their favorite fan. Oh, shucks. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, now I need... Mean, that's good. Good, okay. 
Parla bene inglese? There is a person that he said that he is studying now. And he Okay, so you go tell him. My advice is to pick up the microphone and to become a singer instead. And you can tell him the reason I say that is because the drummer always works for the singer. Okay? It's a good band. You, you went on with uh, working in the movie business. Yes, well, film scoring requires a lot of exactitude. And so Fairlight went from 8 bit to 16 bit. That was a big jump of technology. And I used that for many, many years and did a lot of work on that. But then, um, I, to make a score, to print out a score for musicians to read, um, I bought a software called Finale. And um, that was, would take MIDI information and turn it into music. Okay. But to get into Finale, I needed to buy another software called Performer. And Performer was just a, a, a transition to get from Fairlight to Performer, through Performer to Finale. So I could make, write music for orchestra. And I never really thought about Performer because it didn't really do very much. Until one day I went over to Stanley Clark's house and saw him working with Performer and doing incredible things with it. So I thought, sure, I've got that software. So I went home and read the book, which I'd never done before, and spent one summer learning Performer. And so I've been using Performer ever since. And I don't use the Fairlight at all. Yes, mid -80s. And so I've been using Digital Performer ever since. And recently I also got um, uh, Pro Tools, which is the most brilliant um, software ever. It's so simple, but so powerful. You still use that? Yeah, yeah, I use that a lot. And I um, also use Reason. Re I have Reason, but I don't use it. So you use I like the look of Reason. I think Reason uh, yeah, looks really cool. When you switch it on the back. And, you see, and the wire moves yeah. like that. <laughs> but um, is there something in particular that you use now? Uh, now I use you, Performer you and maybe, uh, maybe or whatever. Well, I also use except that I get confused. Because while I was making this movie, I'm using um, Performer and Final Cut Pro and After Effects, which is for using stills. Like the, whole, the first two minutes of the movie is just photographs uh, yes. moving. That's in a program, a software called After Effects. I'm using After Effects, Final Cut Pro, Pro Tools, Performer, as well as Photoshop. Yeah. Uh, and so I get to the point, wait a minute, where's play? Because each one has a different system of, you know, how to advance one frame. Uh, and so it drove me a little bit nuts trying to remember which, which software I'm using. Um, but as soon as I stick, you know, if, if, I'm, if I'm on Performer after a while, I, I just start thinking in Performer language. And then if I go to Pro Tools, I remember Pro Tools language. You know, you know, move one frame is different on performance, it's different on Final Cut, it's different on Pro Tools, it's different on uh, After Effects. You use all this stuff for, um, you know, for the movie thing, uh, but you still, you still play drums a lot. You've got different projects from Oyster Well, actually not so much. I play drums once every year for one month. Okay, but the question is, when you play rock again, or when you play acoustic, uh, if you have to record something about this kind of music, I mean, back to uh, back to basics, do you still uh, you you use tapes? Um, what Tape, do you use, no. I mean, do you use digital tools to work on something that is more yes. acoustic driven? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Some people insist, like Les Claypool, he records drums onto tape because he likes the way drums saturate the tape yeah. um, and then goes to Pro Tools. Okay. I don't bother with that. If I cared more I would, I guess, but I, I, to me the sound is secondary. It's like what is being played that's the important thing. And um, he is a, an, an obsession for analog equipment and he has a collection of all old analog gear and I'm about to sell him all my old stuff. Yeah. Okay, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, uh, that's it, so, uh, I think we're gonna, we're gonna get a picture of it. Sure. Okay. Okay. Do you have enough light for a picture?